I'm Diane and welcome to the Pressure Pile. My name is Kunhilter. I'm in Iceland. I live in Iceland and this is my podcast, vlog, chat type of thing called the Pressure Pile because I have process and they are in piles and I just keep adding to the pile. Um, I talk mainly about about yarn, about knitting, about crocheting, what I'm working on, what I finished, which I was very happy about last week because I managed to finish two things and then what I want to make next time. I do talk a lot about weather as well because <laughs> I'm a stereotypical Middle East woman and I like talking about the weather. Which currently it it's foggy and overcast and I'm pretty certain we were supposed to have a sunny weather today and like plus 17-18. Um, don't know about the temperature 17 18 celsius um don't know what the temperature is right now but it's definitely not sunny it's bright but it's not sunny and i'm gonna stick my arm up never mind it's windy it is windy and i'm not wearing much in a term way or sleeve so <laughs> not happening um I mean, apart from the window, it would be a fairly pleasant weather today. But I don't think it's much past, like, 10 degrees Celsius, I think. Um, oh, about the eruption um, in Fagadalsfjall, uh, which is close by Reykjavik. Which, I don't know if either of my sisters, not the one in the Reykjavik, but... Mm, I was gonna say I'm not sure if any of my uh, either of my sisters who live in the area are actually able to see the volcano this time or the eruption. It is pretty visible though, according to some of the pictures I've seen taken from our capital. But eh? <laughs> that said, so the eruption started on what was it Wednesday last week. Straight away, there were about a thousand people who trundled up there. Because human nature, I guess. I guess human nature is... Oh look, there's an earth fire. Let's go look at it. The fact that people aren't... I think I've heard about a handful of incidents. Where people have twisted their ankles. Um, I th can't remember if it was last weekend or just in the past week. Because people went up yet again not properly pre prepared and not ready for the fact that this is um a walk to get through the eruption and the area is difficult it is lava terrain it is rocky it is long and it's not really for um, people who aren't that experienced. There is a hair program right now. It's always a single hair. Um, but yeah, and I think I heard about one, maybe two people who have broken like their leg or something because they fell down because people didn't realize that it's going to get dark this time of of the year. So people aren't prepared for the fact that night falls. Which is a little bit sad, but there you go. The fact that Jenny is right and there still haven't been... Considering the thousands upon thousands of people who have gone up to see the eruption, that there hasn't been any more serious accidents, um, it's just mind-boggling. Like I said last year with the last year's eruption, the fact that no one died is amazing. And, you know, crossing our fingers... We, we, we stay in that um, golden zone of people getting back home. <laughs> but yeah, the Arab... Still that hair. I can't find it. Do you sometimes feel feel like uh, shaving off all your hair? Because there's just one hair. One hair that is somewhere bothering my eye. Anywho, so... Um... <laughs> Oh yeah! So I told you about how I, m my mother con convinced me to give my 
um, my leftover yarn from my blankets to a lovely, lovely old lady. Um, I got such a nice hug from her. Like, she was so happy, just... Oh. Well, first of all, that I thought of her. And I that I decided to give her that yarn. But also the colours. She was so in love with the colours and the yarn itself. It was just... Like, that woman has been knitting for longer than I have existed. And just being able to make her that happy. Because she is one of these... Um, she's a great-grandmother. I don't know if she's a great-great-grandmother yet. But at least... At the very least, she's a great grandma, and she is a master at using up um, leftovers in yarn. And she makes so many mittens for her great grandchildren, all you know, mittens and little dresses and all sorts of things. And all those sort of leftovers, she is really happy to get because she used them to make uh, what did she say, um, like stripes when she's making like mittens. So you get this little more. Without having to do a lot, but you get a little more of a point of interest, and she was so happy to get the yarn. Now that made me so happy because her hugs are really, really nice and warm. So now, <laughs> um, I've actually been over my leftovers to try and find something. Like I've got some glitter and like something nice in here. I was trying to find more colorful yarns, and yeah, I'm reusing a seam bag. Um, every time I order from Sein, um, you may have ordered from them, but they really tend to send you clothes and items in like these bags, these zipper bags. And I always keep them because they are so useful for like when you're organizing things, when you have to put something in storage. And they're really, really nice. For example, when you're hunting down leftover yarn to give to a lovely, lovely lady. And yeah, so... Also because this plastic is this um, is thick, so it doesn't tear easily, but it's also soft. So it hasn't. I haven't seen it like annoy any of the yarn. I haven't been. Uh, I haven't seen any like static caused by the plastic. So I'm hopeful that the yarn isn't gonna be like from it. We'll see. But yeah, I've been trying to find more of like lighter colored yarns because I mean her eyesight is she's getting on in AIDS, like <clears throat> and apparently a lot of the yarn that she does have does tend towards the darker shades. So I mean there are several of the darker but quite a few of the lighter and um, I'm gonna try and focus on finding lighter shades for her. So I honestly thought I had more leftovers, but apparently I don't. This is interesting. But I did find these two of the Fantasia that I got off of Aisham years and years ago. It's the pink shades. I have these two skeins and a little bit more in that basket, so I might be able to use that to make a smaller shawl, <laughs> like a nice cozy little shawl that um, would be just nice to like use under the um, winter coat or something. So, I mean that's yet another project on the pile, speaking of. So last week I finished two projects, which means that of course I now have two projects going. <laughs> So, I've been under this crochet mood, so I've turned more towards knitting this week. Um, I finally unraveled what I had of this um, scarf. I originally cast on, I think, 54, and the ripping, it was uneven. Like, it started on um, two straight and ended on two curled and it just didn't feel right to me and then the fact that the the edges they were really really like hard with you don't want hard um fabric around your neck just <laughs> no so i finally this week i unraveled everything and cast on again i think i cast on 48 this time um 
So the ripping is equal. It starts and ends the same way. And I now do as um, people have recommended. That is, I start every round by taking the first stitch just straight onto the knitting needle so I don't work it, it goes unworked and um, it feels a lot better. It is a little skinnier and I do like that because I like skinnier longer scarves so that like if the weather is cold and really windy it's easier to like just wrap a length around your neck and then if it gets a little like warmer just drape it over your, you know, neck and shoulder. That's just that's easier when you got a skinnier and long scarf. I just I really love how the colors are turning out. I love the colors in this yarn. The, 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 the you know the orphan that looked really <laughs> like ratty and lonely in this shelf in the store. Um, what is is it silly though? Hang on, where's your name? Where's your name? Ah, there we go, yep. Yeah. It's still the jewel spun. No, I'm kind of giving up on trying to pronounce things properly. Like, my... My vocal cords are just like, nope. I admire people who do the best to pronounce things as it should be. Um, but honestly, the older I get, the lazier I get, and I just, I am of the opinion that how you pronounce things is less important than what you are saying. Like, I kind of want to focus more on what you're saying than how you pronounce the words. Um, this is a bit of a tangent, but I feel like there are way, way, way more people, and I kind of, I'm rumbling, I'm sorry, but... I've had this interaction repeatedly throughout the years that there are there's a certain type of person who will focus more on how you pronounce the words and how you say things and what words you choose and how you write things on your grammar and you no know, vocabulary and they will focus on how you say the thing but they will pay no attention to what is being said and that's really I've always been annoyed by it um getting to the age where I'm just like <sighs> yeah <laughs> I can't be bothered with it anymore like <sighs> so if you mispronounce things just do that's called having an accent I have an accent I don't care how how you pronounce the thing just say the thing um, because I am aware of the fact that my language is considered a little bit difficult for quite a few people of of uh, different nationalities and there's a lot of people who are so anxious and nervous about pronouncing Icelandic words and I'm like ah, which I understand because there are so many people who will just whack their finger in your face and go, you're not supposed to pronounce it that way. I have a speech impediment. I am physically incapable of pronouncing certain Icelandic words correctly because they're... I'm ranting! <laughs> but there isn't one correct way of pronouncing anything. We all speak differently. We all have different vocal cords. We all have different rhythm and... and um, thingies of how we speak and and maybe it's because I grew up being like bullied and ridiculed by, by some people not everyone some people by how I speak and I've just gotten to the point where like I can't turn around and be all like no no you're not speaking correctly because I am physically incapable of speaking my own language correctly and therefore my philosophy is there is no correct way of pronouncing anything. So, for example, with English, what I've decided on doing is that I will take the word, even the big difficult words, I just aim at them and I fire. 
whether I hit the target or not, I don't care. I'm just gonna go for it and then move on. Life is too short for me to be bothered whether or not I'm pronouncing Sigildag correctly. Don't care. <laughs> don't just <it> over. <laughs> but yeah, I am really, really loving how the G-Wheel spot is turning out. Like, can I bring it closer? I think. Like, look. Oh, so pretty. So, yeah. And also, just the amount of yarn that is in the... I just can't. To see, like when I get to the green, I'm really looking forward to the green. It is so pretty. Like the, mm, I gotta say it. <laughs> but yeah, I am way, way, way happier with how this version is because, I mean, it is. Yeah, it is about the length. Oh, you know, the width is about the same length as my neck. And I'm happy with it. The other thing that I started on, because um, I have plans and I don't follow them. <laughs> so, um, where did I put it? So I showed you last weekend, this is a pen that came with a magazine that um, is called Wacom. And, and they typically don't really like um, print patterns. They used to do for a while some years ago and then they stopped and now they start again. So I'm like, okay, gonna take it. This is a ridiculously simple pattern to follow with, if you've been following for a while, that is my favorite type of pattern. Um, because I like patterns where I don't need to think. I like that, <laughs> but of course I don't have the yarn that's um, that the pattern originally calls for. That's like um, uh, tin silk mohair and tin linen, which I think tin is either Danish or Norwegian. I mean, they're talking here about alpaca silk, baby wool lanet, sisu, tin merino, mini alpaca, mandarin petite. Um, I think therefore I am. <laughs> okay, I think the original yarn is probably Norwegian, potentially Danish. Which doesn't really matter because um, I'm I have neither, um, none of the yarn that's in that patterns, but I do have um, ice yarns. And this is my Angora Color Glitz. It's, let's see, it is Angora Acrylic and Lurex Blend. I'm about half, I'm potentially about halfway through the first ski, so this, along with a lot of other ice yarns, yarn, comes in a four skin pack. And each skin is about 550 meters, which, you know, crossing my fingers, I'm, I'm like, I'll hope that's enough. It's definitely going to be enough. Um, because I've got, oh, look how it turns out. Oh, I love it. But I've got this much done since I cast on on Tuesday. And the casting on was the most complicated thing because my brain on a working day is like not really working. But look at the colors. Oh, I wish it was a little bit sunny so I could really show the glitzy part. But this yarn, it is so, it's been so much fun to work with. It is considering the lyric thread, this metallic thread that runs throughout. And that's always going to be hard, but the yarn itself is so soft and it's so, so much fun to work with that I'm kind of incapable of putting it down. Like I've been meaning to read a, this certain book this weekend and I've just been knitting this <laughs> instead. I've been like, I was going to read and then just continue knitting. And yeah, this is 
about a third of the length given, which I don't really understand because it kind of feels like this is way longer than and the measurements kind of imply, like, I don't know. Um, of course, it's a really, really simple pan, but so if I'm not happy about the length, I'm simply going to add to it. Um, the length that they give up is... Where did I put it? There we go. It is 38 or 39 centimeters. So 38 centimeters is... 15 inches and 19 centimeters is not quite 15 and a half like I have no idea how to calculate inches I'm sorry but centimeters just make more sense <laughs> so I'm thinking that maybe I'll go up to 40 centimeters maybe a little bit more so it's about 16 inches plus um, because I kind of want this Better to be like long and a little bit oversized, maybe. But yeah, really, really looking forward to how this turns out. I love this yarn, it is so much fun to work with, and it's a little bit addictive. So, this was definitely not what I was going to work on. <laughs> I was gonna cast on a different sweater, but I know. This yarn really, really, really wanted to get, you know, get used up. But on a side note, I'm happy about because this is the last yarn that was in that um, storage box under my bed. So when I finish with this, that means I will have used up all the yarn that was in that single storage box. Meaning that over the summer, I have emptied out a single storage box, which I'm doing good. And then I'm, I mean, there are the other sweaters to work on, but I I keep looking at other, like, storage <laughs> boxes and bags, and I'm like, hmm, hmm, hmm. So, okay, starting on that, and that, and that. This is fun. This is so much fun. Um, so yeah, this is exactly the thing that I was talking about, and I've been talking about for, like, the past two years, I think, is the fact that now I have this storage of yarn. And this collection that I can literally just reach into and use. So when this pattern just literally came into the home, it was like, I can do it. I can do it now. I have the pattern. I have the yarn. I have the knitting needles. And I have time. So literally nothing stopping me. So, And the most complicated thing in this pattern, I mean, originally... You are switching between colors, so that, and well, that and you using a two threads from different yarns, and I'm just using a single one because, haha, <laughs> me. Um, but literally, the most um, complicated thing for me is the casting on and doing the um, decreases. I like simple patterns. They make life so much easier. <laughs> but yeah. So that is literally, quite literally what I've been working on. I've tied it up a little bit. And, and and the difference that the, just the tiniest amount of tidying up makes is just, wow. So I'm, Probably gonna crochet a simple little, um, excuse me, simple triangle shawl from this last of the, literally last of the Fantasia. I like the pink colors. Like, nice. And then I'm just gonna continue on with the sweater and the scarf. And I really, really need to get going with the glass or with the um, autumn sweater, autumn jumper that I've been meaning to make since last year. <laughs> I need to make it for this autumn because I, 
I know that as soon as it gets really cold or starts really cooling off, I will be trying to reach for the sweater that doesn't exist yet. Just like I did all of last year. And I'm, I'm always like, yeah, I'm concerned, I'm concerned. And I didn't. Because I was doing other things. <sighs> I need to get started on this. After this one. Yep. After this one. Don't hold me to it. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's enough from me this weekend. Um, I'm going to continue. I'm probably going to fixate on this just like I've been doing for the past week. So that hopefully means that... Oh dear. Um, I'll maybe have a sleeve done by next weekend. Hopefully. And well, we'll, see, we'll see how far I get. But it's been a delight to work on. And I'm going to try and find if I haven't got any more of... I feel like I've got more left over here. I really feel like this is rather little, considering... I thought I had more projects done, honestly. So, where are the leftovers? Where did I put them? Because I don't throw them... I don't throw any leftovers away. If there's like little cuttings, I put them in a in a jar with a stopper because my plan is to eventually use that as a stuffing for something small and the bigger leftovers i've always been you know just collecting them and boiling them up and putting them to the side with um because i don't know i just i don't feel comfortable i never felt comfortable at the thought of throwing away leftover yarn um Especially when I know that there's so much that you can do with leftover yarns. You can do like leftover projects, which I've seen quite a few people do. And it's either like, you know, patsy sweaters or patsy like blankets and applicants and that sort of things. And I've been really, really fascinated with particularly the um, blankets and applicants because, I mean, you can always use that. But, you know... When there's a sweet old lady who gives you a warm, happy hug when you give her your left, literal leftovers, and when you hear her delight at working with the same yarn that gave you such delight, I mean, that just, that's just, that's just. I kind of adore that woman. She's she's been through a lot in her life, and she's always been managed to be strong, and always managed to find a laugh. And I really admire those people because when you know some of the things that people go through, and just how they embrace life and continue, and it's like. Yeah, that's a matter of point. Being able to continue walking the path even when the path gets rough and difficult is... I admire that. And I want to... I want to make it a little, little bit brighter. And sometimes these smallest things are the things that make us the most happy. So that's it. I'm going to continue working on the jumper or sweater, whatever word I'm going to use after five minutes. Try to remember whether I have any more leftovers. Well, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what I figure out. And uh, hopefully I will see you again next weekend. And until then, take care. And keep knitting, keep crocheting. And hopefully life will be as wonderful to you as it possibly can be. And I'll hopefully see you again next weekend. Until then, take care. Bless, bless.